summary really is that the blank ammunition submitted by the Nigerian Army uh, is not designed to be fired by the rifles that fired the light rounds. It's of a totally different caliber. While they are both 7.62 by 29 millimeter, the blank is 7.62 by 51 millimeter. Next slide. Um, this is just uh, you know, 2 by 51 millimeter, which is the type of blank that was submitted. Uh, the first one is fired, you can see the tip. On the top, on the top left corner, there is no there is no projectile because it has already been fired. On the top right corner, that's a complete round. On the bottom uh, left corner, you can see that that's a blank round that has been fired. The blank round is simply, you know, uh, the hot accelerants and gases, you know, doesn't actually have a projectile. It's just crimped on the top. Um, so when it is fired, when the firing pin hits the base of the round, it simply just opens and expels the, you know, the gases. So that one on the bottom is fired, but that one on the uh, on the bottom right has not been fired. But as you can see, well, they are quite different calibers, the, the live and the black. Essentially, you, you, you wouldn't really be able to chamber this kind of round in, in that kind of, uh, that kind of round, this kind of, uh, if one firearm is firing the one on the top. Okay. On the very top of the uh, bottom right, you have this, both the very top two is, a, is an expanded 762 uh, by 39 millimeter and a live one, as well as uh, a live blank, uh, or a blank of uh, 762 by 51 millimeter and one that has been fired, an expanded one at the base. So that's for the evidence of the um, of the of the, the ballistics evidence. For the digital uh, evidence, um, the authenticity of the video evidence standard by LCC could not be determined as we have no access to the servers from which the source recording was made. And there are certain ways that you can, because you do not review the source directly, you first of all image it. So there's a way you authenticate for every, you can always prove that what you uh, review was what was given to you. So we carried out that internal process to, you know, ensure that what was given to us was what was reviewed. But authenticating from the source could not be done because, you know, it was just wet. We didn't have the, uh, we were not able to, yeah, you know, access the, the video evidence from the source. So that's what the second line says. Therefore, there was no hash value from the source device to be used for comparison after forensic imaging and hash value was created from the digital evidence standard uh, by the LCC. We were also unable to determine the method of extraction used and this uh, CCTV system information from, it, from the recording device because of course we couldn't access the recording device. Uh, however, during exta exten extensive visual examination of the captured footage, uh, because we reviewed the footage frame by frame, uh, the evidence that the footage given to us did not show any signs of being doctored. Often, if you had to keep being doctored, you might have a change in the pixel, you might have a change in the time, but none of this was, was observed. Uh, so the time frame and the pixel were consistent, suggesting that the integrity of suggesting the, to the integrity of the uh, and that the video footage. So um, we also did an extensive scene examination, and the reason why we did that was, you know to ascertain if we could find any signs of, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, bullet penetrations on the edifice of the plaza that would, you know, suggest the discharge of life ammunition. Um, we, what you can see there is the, the viewing, you know, spot from the, uh, from TP1. And while it has some, you know, some holes in the glass frames, these were determined to not have been caused by you know, high velocity projectiles. Uh, you know, you could see some interlocking tiles and rocks were visible within, you know, the glass structure and even on the base of the glass structure. Um, so a thorough examination of the surrounding area and every piece of uh, Admiralty Plaza showed signs of, there were signs of extensive vandalism and arson, um, which was of course not covered in the scope of our investigation, but this, in forensics, we like to, you know, uh, ensure that 
the scene to a large extent has been you know, preserved, I mean, to speak to the integrity of the evidence. But you had extensive damage, uh, but there was no apparent sign or damage as a result of discharge of live ammunition around the vicinity of the plaza. Thank you. You have 7.62 by 39 millimeter ammunition. One was fired, and this was of the live kind of ammunition. Yeah. And one was a live ammunition that was not fired. Yes. Now that is one class, 7.62 by 39 millimeter. Then you have blank rounds that were tendered. One of those blanks was fired, and one of those blanks was not fired. And the blanks that were tendered were seven. 62 by 51 millimeter, which is quite different from 730 mm -hmm. FPS. So, for your analysis, it is obvious that a variety of drugs in operation of that particular day from the coverage in the United No, I, 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 I don't know that. That's the way I don't know. I just looked at the evidence of this. I do not know where it is. But I don't know what that is. Now, what's the drugs? What am I going to say that says? One was 7.62.5, one was 7.62.1. There are two, by the analysis now, I believe that there are two different ammunitions. Two different ammunitions. Just to reiterate, the evidence that was presented by the ammunition was 7.62 by 39 millimeter light round, which one was fired. And 762 by 51 millimeter black round, of which one was fired and one was not. And they are not of the same. Exactly. I don't want to say that. So, this evidential value to say that one group of arms is 736251, and one is 76239. That's what I'm saying. The calibers presented to us. Yes, the calibers presented to us. Are two groups of millimeters. They are two different. And no, they are two groups of millimeters. It's okay. Now, is it possible for your analysis to indicate the time and hour those the standard and the source we use? No, just to just to really enlighten on ballistics investigation. Now, it is possible to determine you know, what firearm fired what. Um, this is possible. Uh, uh, once you have the cartridge cases after the bullet has been fired, and you have the firearms in question, your suspected firearms, you take a test firearm from your suspected firearms, and with the, you know, the cartridge case in question, you can determine the high degree of certainty which of those firearms you will discharge that calculation? Yes, this is possible. Yes. It's also possible to stick the other time that you have to face. Is it possible? The time that you have to face. No, that's not. We uh, can't say for time. Yes. But we can tell you if that firearm fired this ammunition. I mean, to determine the time, you may have to rely on other things. But what we simply do is the ballistic match. To see if this case fits this firearm. Okay, if I make sure you have the K2 rifle, you have black rifle, you have the K47 rifle, you have the Bali rifle, you have the Boba rifle, you have the Baraka rifle, all who are together. No, that doesn't Which one can you pin down to be 76251 and 76259? Thank you. Um, because we want to know who actually fired. The, 
There are various, there are various classes of ammunition that are linked to various types of rifles. So if you have multiple firearms being chambered to the same type of ammunition, the 7.62 by 39 millimeter is a, well, of Russian origin. Yeah, Therefore, it's you know, this Soviet bloc nation, the Russian, uh, Russian uh, regime states, mostly chamber their rifles with that kind of ammunition. And it's not anyone, you know, as you just mentioned, um, there's quite a number of them. There are various types of ammunition. Um, Sound 62 by 51 millimeter, for instance, is chambered to setting other kind of firearms. You know, a 762 by 39 millimeter is chambered to it's quite a number of firearms. You know, so you, 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 you can have an extensive list of rifles that fire that kind of ammunition. I, I agree with you, but I am in the 60s. The, 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 the Russian type of Mark 4 and the rest of them have been faced up. AK 49, Spalani, 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 it's for lab, or it's for AK-49, or it's for AK-47. To actually know, yes, these are the agencies you can say, they tell us that uh, it's capable of doing this kind of thing. It's impossible to get that. Well, it's not to you know, speculate as to what agency is using what kind of, what kind of power. We just simply did an analysis of the evidence presented to us. Uh, to provide a list of what kind of right to fire 762 uh, by 39 and what fire what cross can be done. But this was not what we were. Well, yes, our mandate was just to look at the thing. From the different applications made by Council to obtain Exhibit C study it and to facilitate taking off taking on the witness at cross examination the proceedings must come to a close today further hearing in respect of the forensic experts evidence is hereby adjourned to 11 september 2021 we want to appeal to all counsel to please take all necessary steps to obtain exhibit c today the witness comes all the way from Kaduna and it's at a lot of cost to the forensic company. So I'm appealing to all counsel to be ready to take cross examination tomorrow. Yes. The two are in one. Yes. The hard copy and the flash drive were admitted together as one document. Thank you very much, witness. We'll see you tomorrow.